Good morning, good evening, and good night, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Roller Coaster Tycoon. Again, I am Dr. D-Dub, and I hope I find you guys all doing well today. So let's go ahead and pause the game real quick, and let's take a look at our objective one more time. We are nearing the end of the game here, or of, at least of this map. Uh, it is the 21st of August. We have until the end of October, so that gives us all of September and all of October. So just over two months to finish this out. Um, I realize I didn't really explain the uh, front entrance, so we'll take care of that really quick. Uh, again, shows just the view of this here. You can open and close the park. Um, this is a kind of cool feature. You can buy land, actually, and it depends on the map, how much you can buy and where you can buy it. Uh, but if I zoom out here, you can see all these little white uh, sort of posts is purchasable land. And so there's actually quite a bit of land you can buy on this map. I don't plan on purchasing any of it because you can see we still have plenty of open space here that we haven't used and we probably won't use all of it. Um, so this is the purchase land tool. Uh, this tool is somewhat the same, but it allows you to only build above ground or below ground. You can't actually place something on ground level. Um, you can see on this map, we don't have the ability to buy any of that type of property. Uh, again, the red arrows will locate the front entrance and then you can rename the park with this. Uh, this tab here, show graph of park ratings over time. Uh, this gives you the uh, park rating with uh, respect to the months that have been played. So you can see we uh, have a park rating of 787 currently, and we've had a fairly steady increase minus whatever this was. Um, guests in park, again, fairly steady increase. We have 429. And if we skip over here to our objective tab, um, we had 787 park rating, 429 guests, and we only need a 600 park rating and 250 guests. So we have more than met our goal. So I could just sit here and do nothing for the next two months, but that wouldn't make for a very interesting video now, would it? So I don't plan on doing that. Plus, I promised I would do some other things. So I'm going to deliver on those promises. Uh, back to this tab here, just as it has been with everything else. This is the money tab. You can adjust... Uh, how much it costs. We've been here a little bit. You can see how many people have been admitted to the park. Um, I believe that only uh, counts paid admissions. So anyone that was let in for... No, I misspoke. In our first episode, we saw that was different. Okay, so this is everyone that's ever been in the park. So we have 429 current guests. So you can see about 200 and 225-ish guests have left. Uh, that's fine. And you can also see how much money we've made from our admission to the park uh, price here. Uh, show park statistics. You can see the square foot. I don't remember exactly how many quote-unquote feet each tile is. Um, I'm going to guess it's 10. I could see this being 1,771 tiles. That's just a guess. I'm not completely sure. And then guess in park, it's redundant here. You can see it in the bottom left and you can also see it here. Uh, again, this is the objective screen. We've seen that plenty. And then I mentioned this briefly before, and you'll we'll see this more on the uh, maps that have a longer time period. I think either the third or fourth map we'll end up playing will have a four-year time limit instead of just a one-year time limit. So uh, you definitely have more chances to receive awards the longer you are playing. So Okay, that's it for this. Hope that was quick enough. Uh, if I went over any of that too quick for you guys, let me know and I will cover it or I'll answer it in the comments below. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and unpause this and let us continue where we left off. Uh, so the only thing that we got that we didn't cover last episode, I think we unlocked it, but we didn't build it, was an observation tower. We'll bid, build this real quick. Um, the tower is a cylindrical steel structure. The observation car is hauled up by cables running to the top of the tower. Uh, this thing spins and goes vertically, stays at the top for a little bit, and then will spin and go down. Uh, you see this at some actual amusement parks. Uh, it's, it's kind of a cool feature, I think. Um, some are just kind of observation decks that let you go up to the top. Others are actual towers. Now let's see if we can... Do we have any open space in the ride here. I think one, two, I think this tile right here is open. So I wonder if I can, yes, I can. Awesome. So you can kind of interlace rides and I'm just making this as tall as I want. 
that's probably good. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> so it's a very basic ride. I don't know if I'll have room for our entrance and exit here. Yes, we will. Uh, I don't know how high the entrance and exit are. You can see they were kind of cutting it close. If this ride was at height 10, I don't think we would have been able to put that entrance there. But luckily, that worked out really well. So that's it for that. It's a very simple ride. I just wanted to build that and kind of get it out of the way. Uh, oh, and one thing to note, like I just did here, if you open a ride and there's no path to it, guests will start to complain that there's no way to get to it. Um, so it's good to keep a ride closed until you actually have proper pathways to that ride. So let's go ahead and do a red path here again. Uh, this isn't going to be super popular, so we won't make the line super long. All right, let's open that up. Get rid of the one. Sorry if I'm going a little quick. I'm trying to make sure we have time to build our custom coaster that I promised you guys. And we'll charge... Just a dollar for that. No music. Let's paint that since it's going in between this. Let's kind of make the color scheme match. So the red is on the bar there. So let's make that a, a light blue. Or a turquoise. Yeah, I like that. Uh, black goes well with that. And then a gray base. Does a white base look any better? Oh, that's kind of cool. It changes the pattern there. I don't know if every color has got its own pattern. No, it doesn't, but that's kind of cool. We'll keep it at, oh man, I'm cycling through way too many. We'll, go... we'll just keep it gray. Uh, and then we'll keep the plane entrance and then the cabin itself. Uh, you can see we only have access to change the top and the bottom colors there. Uh, so let's do another, let's do a green, that kind of goes. And light blue. Um, I don't like that green. There, that's better. Okay, you can see low excitement, zero intensity, so that's good. The excitement is a lot higher than intensity, so someone who doesn't like an intense ride, they're going to have a good time on this, even though it's a low excitement rating. And then a little bit of nausea. There's also some stats here, average speed, max speed, uh, ride time, ride length. So, not super important, but... It's there. We'll make this the observation tower because that's what it is. Okay, it is now September. That gives us two months to build this ride, which in real life is extremely unrealistic. But, you know, this is not real life. <laughs> so let's go ahead and build that. Okay, so what did I say I was going to build? A wooden roller coaster. So construction, the track is laminated wood topped with a flat steel running rail constructed on a wooden support structure. Trains are held on the track by upstop wheels, which run under the inside edge of the rails. Basically means it's not going to fall off because the wheels are underneath the track. And I think that's how they are in real life. Um, I could be mistaken, but I believe that's how it's set up. So we have just over seven and a half grand to build this. So we're gonna, we're gonna build it. We're gonna do it up big. I'm probably gonna spend every penny I have left here um, because why not? We don't have anything else to spend it on, right? Uh, so I think the maximum length you can make a station is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12. So you can't make a station. Doesn't matter what ride it is. It cannot be longer than 12. Uh, and I want this to have as long of a station as possible because we are going to basically fill this entire area with a line, put an entertainer in there, and just kind of go crazy with it. So on this, you can have just regular inclines. And remember I said each ride kind of has its own quirks. Um, there's different building features depending on the type of ride you're building. Uh, so this would just be a normal uphill. Uh, however, it has zero speed or almost no speed leaving the station. So we need to put it on a chain lift to increase its height. And we're going to go tall with it. That should be good. And you can see we don't have the option to do that chain increase when we do a curve, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to curve that. It's going to go real slow on that curve kind of to build up some intensity. 
and so they can see what's coming and then we're going to go straight down let's get a better angle of this can't see what i'm doing now that's a drop oh and that works out perfectly okay we started at height 23 oh can i build Yes, I can. Okay, so on this ride, you have the option to build an on-ride photo section. So right at the base of this drop, people get their photo taken, and then <laughs> you can actually see the flash of light go off, and it makes a little sound, and then people also have the option at the end of the ride to purchase their photo, uh, which I think is pretty cool, and it's a good way of making extra money. Okay, so it's, it's raining right now. Let's go ahead, zoom out, and we'll head over to our information kiosk temporarily. And you can see everyone that has an umbrella. And you can also see, wow, I'm tripping over my words. You can also see there's people that as they walk by, they're stopping at the information kiosk and purchasing an umbrella. That guy, right? Oh, I can't keep track of them. They're too tight together. But anyway, people buy umbrellas, like I said, like crazy when it rains, so. All right, let's continue our ride. So if you have a ride that's going way too fast and doing turns, it ups the intensity like crazy. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Um, okay, so that's going to put us back up at 23 if we do that. So let's back that off. We'll go up to... What is that at? 19? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to have some speed still, still a decent amount, uh, and we'll have it drop down in a curve like that. I don't really know what my plan is for this. I'm just kind of going, so we'll see what happens. So I'm trying to drop it. You can see there's very steep, steep slopes and just regular slopes. Uh, so I did, I think, three steep slopes down, two steep slopes up. And then I'm doing one steep slope up, and I'll probably stop there. And let's see. I don't plan these out in the slightest. I just kind of build them. So if I ever seem like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because that's exactly the case. I don't know what I'm doing. So um, if we make this a wider piece here, we can bring it down one tile closer to this. Bring it down. We'll see if we can go back up here. And then I think, I haven't done it yet, but you can, this is what I was talking, I said you can slope the rides. I think the correct term is actually banking the slope. Um, yeah, roll slash banking. So you can curve this the slope. So if they're going extremely fast and you have them just do a, a flat curve, um, like I did up here, they're not going fast at all. So this isn't a problem, but if you have them going at an extremely fast pace and they take a turn like this, uh, this game factors in uh, G force. So for those of you that don't know what that is, um, intensity on roller coasters and of, in a lot of physics in real life is measured in G's. And so one G is equivalent to the force of gravity. So if you've ever heard of a zero G anything, it is zero gravity you are not experiencing the effects of gravity um, however with this if you have them go on a curve at a really fast pace it will basically throw them to the side which will give them a lot of uh, the term is lateral g's uh, which you don't really want that is going to be very intense um, and usually not exciting. You'll get very few people that actually enjoy that. So so on these uh, turns, you have three options. You've got these small ones that are a, I guess, two by two area. You've got the larger ones, which are a three by three area. And you've got even wider ones, which only take things at a, I guess that would be 90 degrees. This is a 45 degree angle. So you need two of them to make a turn. But since this is going to have quite a lot of speed, I'm banking it and making the turn as shallow as possible to make sure that it is not too intense. Uh, so you can see I would have hit this track here. Um, what am I hitting? I think I'm hitting that ride. 
So if I back this off a little bit, I can keep it going straight for one, which will bring it slightly out, slightly further out, and I can continue. I think that tree's in my way. Yes, it is. Um, and you can see it's it's kind of difficult to build with all this support structure getting in my way. If you go up here to this eyeball, uh, there are different views you can do. So you can look underground, you can see underwater, remove the land, like the ground, um, anything that's above ground, vertical faces, if you like raise the land up, which I'll do that more in another park, and then see through rides. Um, I don't want to see through the ride, I want to see through the support. So now I can actually see what I'm doing. So we'll just do a little bit of up and down here. I want to try and build this quick. It is now October, so we need to finish this up very quick. Um, so pardon me if I move quick here. I need to uncheck invisible supports. And we're just gonna kind of end this here. So, oh, I don't have enough money. So if that happens, you can click this cash tab here. I will cover more of what this is later, but you can take out a loan just by, I'm gonna give myself, actually, I don't need that much. I'm gonna give myself $2,000 more. And again, we'll cover that in much more detail later. That's a kind of confusing tab to cover very quickly. And that is our ride. Let's get the entrance and exit build. Sorry, I'm kind of rushing. I want to finish this. I don't have to have it done by the end of October, but I'd like to. So we're actually going to go over this ride here back down all right let's open that up build an exit okay so that is our our coaster let's actually test it real quick so we can see how well this does and let's name this let's give it a name um actually let's make it not free first make that 250 uh, and you can see the on-ride photo. I'm going to charge them two bucks for that. Uh, so, what should we name this? Um, it's wood, so wood-related. The splinter. Let's go with that. I like it. All right, let's watch it. I don't know how intense this is going to be, so it could be an awful ride. It could be really good. We'll see. You can see I'm having them go around all the curves without too much speed, because if you do too much, it can make them really nauseous and it just ups the intensity like crazy. So, is no one riding this? Oh, it must be really extreme. Yeah, so it's really extreme. Um, so not, not my greatest ride. <laughs> Fun to build. I love building these, but I probably made it go a little, little too high. Uh, a little too fast at parts. Building rides is very uh, temperamental. So it's only medium excitement, but extreme intensity. And if you guys remember last episode, I mentioned if your intensity is a lot higher than your excitement, this is almost two and a half times as intense as it is exciting. It's not usually a good thing. There are some people that like it, but it's not going to attract by any means everyone. You can even see there's some people, if we watch long enough, you can see some people approach the ride and jump with terror at the ride. Um, there was one, yeah, that guy just did it right there. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but that's how you can kind of tell the reaction without actually looking at the ride stats or checking their thoughts or anything. So let's go ahead and this is a good example. Not everyone's going to want to ride this. So we're not going to wait for any loads. We've got three car or three trains with a lot of cars in them. So as soon as it stops, as soon as people stop filtering onto the ride, you can see they're walking down. As soon as they get in the car, if there's no one ready to ride next, it will go ahead and take off. Now these people will wait for this next car. 
And the ride is only, I think it tells you the time. Ride time, one minute and two seconds. So they won't be waiting long to get on this ride at all. So, okay, let's, let's try and color everything. Let's make it a little bit more wood feeling. No, let's make that. I don't know. It's been so long since I've done all this coloring of rides. I kind of like that. Yeah, that gives it a good wood theme. And then with the trains here, we'll make them blue. And this is what I was talking about last episode. You can make the trains different colors. So train one is blue with white seats. Train two can be green with white seats. And then train three will be red with white seats. Kind of not quite primary colors, but there we go. That is the splinter. <laughs> Again, I only had, what did I say? I had a budget of, I think, seven and a half grand when I started that, and I had to take out a $2,000 loan to finish it. So building rides is fairly expensive, um, especially... Oh, yes! Forest Frontiers. Listen to that. Thank you. If I could take a bow right now, I would. Um, right as I finish, they comment that my park is very cheap. Okay, so that's what happens at the end of the objective. Um, you can see it's set back to March. So every year is only March through October. Um, I'm not completely sure why. I understand October. A lot of businesses and companies, their fiscal calendar or their fiscal year ends at the end of October typically and they start again in November um, so November 1st is the start of a new fiscal year but so we completed our objective um, and they give you your company value I'm not exactly sure what that is I think that's just how much my park is valued at even though I definitely spent way more than seven grand I spent more on this one ride on the splinter than I did on my entire park value I guess uh, but I can go ahead and enter my name in the scenario chart. Dr. Dita. All right. You can see we're getting a lot of upgrades here. But since this park is now over, we will experience all of those different upgrades. And I will show you everything this game has to offer, or at least to the best of my ability, over the course of these maps. So you can see there's some stuff we didn't build. We didn't build a wooden crazy rodent roller coaster. We didn't build a steel mini coaster. The little tram there, this little car ride, um, didn't build the boats. I think we built all of our food, but, and that is just a fraction of what this game has to offer. Like I said, when you spend $400 a month on the maximum funding, it allows for the purchase or the development of even more uh, rides, attractions, variations on the coasters, um, different special pieces that you can build, uh, different cart types. Uh, I could go on and on, but you guys, I hope, get the idea. There's a lot of variants that can be added to all of your builds um, just through using the uh, research and development tab. So I think that is going to do it for our very first park, Forest Frontiers. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys are liking this series. Uh, again, please leave any comments or suggestions, or if you guys want to see anything in specific, or you have a certain ride you want me to build or try to model after an existing ride or something, just put it in the comments below and I will do my best to accommodate that. Obviously, my priority is always going to be uh, meeting our objective for the year because I really don't want to fail an objective while recording for you guys. Um, that wouldn't be too fun for me or for you guys, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, so that will always be my priority, but wherever I can, I will always try to incorporate some of your ideas, some of your designs uh, into my part just to kind of incorporate you guys into all this. So thank you again for watching. I will see you guys next time.